The last bit that I want to share with you tonight, inshaAllah ta'ala, is something that is, it requires some very serious thinking. And I want you guys, inshaAllah ta'ala, to pay, pay as best attention as you can. There, there's one last concept I want to share with you, and maybe I'm in a good mood, so I'll share one more example with you too. One of my favorite examples. But the concept I want to share with you. You know, if I was to pick up an article about taqwa, or if I pick up an article about iman, or I pick up an article about hadith, some subject in Islam, and I start, I grab the mic and I start reading the article. Sometimes in the Muslim world, for example, the khutbah is written, and the imam goes up and he reads the khutbah. Even if you can't see the imam, because you're one of those awesome Muslims who is last to the Jumu'ah prayer and you're sitting by the shoes outside, <laughs> right? If you're one of those awesome Muslims and you don't see the imam, can you tell that he's reading and not speaking? You can actually tell from his tone. You can tell from almost like, it's not natural language. Because written language is very formal, right? You don't, you have longer sentences. As I'm speaking to you right now, when I'm speaking to you right now, I have made countless grammatical mistakes. I have repeated myself several times. I have repeated myself several times. I have repeated myself several times. If I was writing an article, would I repeat myself in this way? No, and actually if somebody transcribed my lecture, they would hopefully remove all of the repetition. You understand? And I say things like, uh-huh, you understand? Did you get that? Hmm? Huh? Uh -huh. But I don't write those things, do I? You don't see like H-E-H-E. -H -E. Like, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't get that in, a, in writing. What I'm trying to say is when you're speaking, when you're speaking and when you're reading, people who know you can tell the difference especially. If your child, for example, memorized a piece of poetry, and you've never heard this poetry before, but they memorized it, and they came to you and they started reciting this poetry, will you know that this is not something from your child? You will know. Like, where'd you get that from? No, 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 I just said it, I made it up. I swear, no, no, you didn't make it up. Tell me where you got it from. You know? You can tell this is not his speech. There's a clear distinction between speech spoken word and written word. Written word is far more accurate, far too accurate to be natural. It doesn't occur naturally for people. They hesitate and stumble and make mistakes, etc, etc. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was among his people for 40 years. They argue in linguistics that people have speech patterns. People tend to use similar kinds of sentences. People yet tend to make the same kinds of mistakes when they speak. You know? They have add-ons, like I say, you know, a lot. That's my thing. I say, you know? You know? I say that a lot, like, you know? <laughs> so there, there's a pattern in speech. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started reciting Qur'an, was it like his other speech? No. And can you immediately tell, wait, 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 that's not how he talks. Nobody talks like that. I never heard anybody talk like that. What is that? You understand? They don't see a book in front of him. They don't see the angel giving him the book. They don't see any of it. But they can still tell this is not from him. This is from somewhere else. This is not from him. So when they heard it, they would call him a magician. Right? They would call him a magician. Now the thing with magic is magic is something you're supposed to see. If I pull a pigeon out of here right now, you know, if I pulled out a napkin from here and it kept on going, you know, then this would be something you see and you're impressed. Magic is usually and pretty much always something you see. The Quraysh are calling Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi a magician not because of something they see, but because of something they... Oh, that's weird. That's weird. They're so impressed by this speech, even though they don't believe that they're ready to call it as impressive as magic. So we think when they called him a magician, they were insulting him. But actually, they themselves didn't even realize they were accepting half the faith already. Because when you call something magic, you've already taken a leap of faith. 
You're saying, I have no other explanation. It's some mystical, unusual, paranormal activity that's going on here that I cannot describe through science or common sense. So I'm going to call it what? Magic. Well, you're already halfway there, buddy. You already said it's from the unseen. You know? You're already making that progress. So this is one of the concepts I want you to think about, inshallah ta'ala, in your studies of the Qur'an. Like I said, when I come back, hopefully, hopefully, I haven't got, run this through the government yet. By that I mean my wife. Um, so if I get approval from the ministry, then inshallah ta'ala, next year, you know, we'll get, a, we'll get a domestic visa. We call it domestic visa back home from, our, from the family. So if I come, I want to share with you the entire seminar and the entire seminar is things like how come Allah repeats himself how come the surahs are in this order how come the stories are a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit there how come the names of the prophets actually what are the names of the prophets mean like what does Musa mean what does Ibrahim mean these are not Arabic words right they're not Arabic words and how is there a miracle even in the meanings of their names is there even a miracle in that subhanallah you know uh, uh, there are other questions like some people think there are mistakes in the Quran or contradictions in the Quran. Let's let's hear what they have to say. Let's not get angry at them. Let's say Allah says, "Hatu burhanakum." Bring your evidences, bring your concerns, bring your criticisms. Allah invited them to do that. So when they do that, they say these kufar, they think there are contradictions in the Quran. <laughs> Dude, they're like they're doing what Allah told them. Welcome, bring it, bring it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it from you. Let's hear what you have to say about this book, and then let's respond. Let's do that. And we have to be people that are not afraid of criticism. Our book is so awesome, we don't have to fear criticism. We have to, we have to, be, we have to be loving this book. And we have to be so confident in this book. I tell you, I, I'm motivated to teach this particular course and these, this subject matter because I, it did something for me. There's, you know, you already have Iman, but it's spiritual in nature. But when you, get, when you go through this stuff, it becomes intellectual on top of that. There's no way this can be done by a human being. It's just... It's not possible. That's not possible. You know? 